I'd like to thank our partners at Flexio for powering our science mission and sponsoring this video so that we can stay informed and educated with severe weather strikes. Testing one, two, three, just making sure you can still hear me, buddy. This is extreme meteorologist Reed Timmer in Plymouth, Massachusetts. This is Plymouth Harbor. And that is Plymouth Rock right there. A little bit smaller than I thought it was, but high clouds from the Bear Clinic leaf taking shape as this coastal storm is starting to get going. Looks like this is going to be the biggest storm to hit this area in about 10 years. And it's been 1,400 days, more than that, for many of the National Weather Service offices around here since the last blizzard warning was issued. So definitely a big storm coming in here. Big wind producer, bomb cyclone that's going to drop in its central pressure at a rate of 50 millibars over a 24-hour period. And it looks like some of the models are even showing the central minimum pressure to drop below 970 millibars. Already lost power before 7 a.m. out here. We are going to hit the road and deploy these Gravitrons to sample the Sting Jet. First Gravitron deployment. It's been warm in the car, 1,018 millibars. Lincoln Green, time synced, and we're gonna deploy it out there. The goal when deploying the Gravitron sensors is to flex tape the sensor above the level of anticipated storm surge flooding and also to find a very solid pole, like a power pole or a street sign, something that's going to be able to hold the sensor in place during the entire duration of the storm. We deployed three gravity wave sensors in a triangle pattern at the base of Cape Cod in the Sandwich, Massachusetts area. The goal is to have approximately 0.5 kilometer separation between the individual sensors in a triangle pattern so that the gravity waves can be tracked as they move through the network. So I've got a Gravitron sensor here. I'm right near Race Point at the tip of Cape Cod and my plan is to flex tape the Gravitron sensor on this side so that I can sample gravity waves as that sting jet whips through. So as the bomb cyclone is intensifying off to the southwest, deepening at a rate of up to 50 millibars over a 24 hour period. That's compressing the atmosphere and shipping gravity waves upstream. And that's what we're gonna try to measure with this. And my plan here is to flex tape this unit right on the edge. I'd like to thank our partners at Flexio for powering our science mission and sponsoring this video so that we can stay informed and educated when severe weather strikes.
the bomb cyclone raged through the night on January 29th, and we weren't sure if the Gravitron sensors were even going to survive. We heard that there was a big time storm surge in Sandwich and that the entire boardwalk had been underwater. But we wouldn't know for sure if they survived until the next light, the very next morning on January 30th, as we went to recover those sensors, we found that one of them had been destroyed. So this entire area was underwater, and you can actually see the water line here. There's the ice. This whole area was under a foot, foot and a half, and a couple feet of water. You can see the boardwalk got lifted up as well. That surge that came in off of the bay. And there was the gravity wave sensor. Gravitron flex taped above. You can see a little bit of rime, accumulation of the snow and spray there on the back side of the side, suggesting that it was obviously downwind of that little pole there. But open, not a lot of structures at all upstream, so it should have been undefeated. Here's that water line. Homes over in that direction are definitely taking on some water at peak surge yesterday, morning high tide. The very next morning when we arrived in Sandwich at the beach after the storm had passed, the dunes and the beach looked completely different. There was evidence of a destructive storm surge that came in. A nearby house was completely destroyed. The dune where the Gravitron sensor number 9 was mounted was completely swept away the night before by a storm surge that was likely in excess of 5 feet. You could see debris strewn all over the location, but we could not find gravity wave number 9. However, the other two locations survived. We are very thankful that number five and also the Gravitron that was deployed at the boardwalk, despite being completely underwater, that sensor was mounted about two feet above the flood water line. And we're very thankful that at least two out of the network of three sensors survived. So I have now returned to the point of deployment. This is the Sandwich Boardwalk. This area was hammered by three to four feet of storm surge, winds gusting over 80 miles an hour and about 18 to 20 inches of snow and I deployed using flex tape the Gravitron sensor to sample those gravity waves right on that pole and I can already see it that it made it. Boom. Stay tuned for the next video and we share the data showing the gravity waves moving through the network of Gravitron sensors during the bomb cyclone of January 29. I'd like to thank our partners at FlexSeal for powering our science mission and sponsoring this video so that we can stay informed and educated when severe weather strikes.